Hello once again, today we have a replay of Electron Slayer. He plays Holy Roman Empire on Ancient Spire versus English. They changed the Ancient Spire, looks different. Less pools but bigger ones. And yeah, he asked for a few tips. Early start on sheep. Okay, that's not a good starting position. Uh, on Ancient Spire, if you can go, if you have two uh, shoreline fish here, you can think about going early shoreline fish and get it really. Um, you get a lot of more resources and you can get an early build bureau more or less for free. You can put one villager less on f uh, food, one more on gold. But. It's a little bit tricky and this one only one sh so would this side he be here it would be great, but this side it's bad. Getting his sheep back, um yeah. That's nice. Mill on the berries. I would have liked the mill here. Um yeah, it's less food than 501k less food, but you get nine. Uh, you get an, a 0.9 from shoreline fish, and you get a 0.55 from berries as not abyssidally. So this mill should be probably here. Also, you only want the mill if you want rebarrel. So at the moment the. Mill is pretty pointless. Okay, he goes. That's another thing I'm not sure. Okay, English goes for the farm mill start. And doesn't have free power no at the moment. Interesting. So, if you go for an Aachen Chapel, you could have skipped the mill in this case. You have the food for another uh, wood for the another house. Can ignore wood in this case and go for more for food or gold. And when you get the uh, food, uh, if you get the resources for the Aachen Chapel, you drop the Aachen Chapel around here, and you can get the wood directly from the Aachen Chapel, and you save the first lumber camp. Gives you a little bit faster age up, it's not necessary, but it's good. Okay, he wants the Aachen Chapel on the stone, but it's more or less the same thing. You have it here in the woods, so you don't need a lumber camp. Also, you can stop with selling them to this one should go on foot, because this is a shorter uh, way to move than back here. So this can turn in the wood probably. Maybe he gets for something. Gets a house with two villagers. That's also not good. One villager is enough. The only things you want to send more than one villager to build is resource buildings, uh, landmarks, and military production if you need it fast. Yeah, that's really bad. Also, this house is absolutely pointless. And gives, also with Abyssid you can do stuff like that, but with HAE it's just not good. And yeah, these we know not on what they should, yeah. So, these villagers walk now from here to here and walks back here, so these villagers move from here to here. You can send these three villagers here to the TC, go to this uh, to the sheep back again, and only send four back. And send the three of here to wood. As you could have rallied all of them to food and just sent them to wood. The only thing you should have done before that is 
put the resources in. To be fair, it doesn't matter because it's not a chapel, they can put it in here anyway. So, yeah, you should have never rallied these units to wood, especially, you, I don't think you needed the wood. Also, maybe gather this wood here, finish, but don't build these two, uh, this one extra house. And then you could have afforded eh, not really military production, but the moment you have, I don't know, t 20 seconds. Let's see. Three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's around 10 seconds walking distance for 10 villagers. That's. 20 seconds idle time and uh, that's a lot of idle time also especially with HRE you want to go a fast castle age and or fast I, I like that he went wheelbarrow but still this mill was a little bit too early for that um also, the wood is way too much wood at the moment. That's why I also don't like the house. If he went for a military building with the wood, I would say it's okay, like a stable. To be honest, a stable is really good versus English, because if you get four spearmen with a scout here, or two uh, horsemen with a scout here, you more or less stop his um, longbows and force him into the barracks with spears. Sorry. Also versus English, I personally would quite advise to go Mindwreck Palace. I think Mindwreck Palace versus English is really good. You can go fast castle age into knights in English. It's more or less fucked because they can deal with knights with plus 4 ranged armor. That's plus 10 armor. Their longbow still 1 damage per shot. And they have so much HP, even Spearmen with the bonus damage and Feudal Age struggle a lot with them. But yeah, that's my personal taste take. And when English swaps into Castle Age, you still can go for Horsemen to keep them down and go Castle Age a second TC or something like that, or get a second TC and. That's also not really good. You why are barracks? Why spearmen? Why this lumber? So this lumber camp, this villager should never exist. I don't really understand the barracks. A stable I would understand, barracks not really, because spearmen do absolutely nothing with this English. I don't even think you can fight villagers with that, with the spearmen. That's why Mongols suck with this English, and... <coughs> yeah, that's just... 240 resources wasted more or less. Double stable, I quite like that. It could be that he didn't scout if he went council uh, if he went Abbey of the King and went for the knight, also for the king. Then the spearman would be okay, but to be honest, you should just scout the enemy base. The scout should is the scout dead? Oh yeah, he died. Okay. That, that would explain why he plays so defensively, but... Yeah, versus English, never go Spearman. It just do, it will do nothing for you. Also, men at arms suck versus English as well, so... Also, they are... HRE men at arms are fine versus English, but you need a lot of upgrades for them to be good in English still just put a few crossbows in there, absolutely fine. So yeah, I would say stables are the way to go. If you are 
Scout died in the early game and you actually go stables. I think you want to afford one or two more scouts. Because you want to see what the enemy is doing. I really don't understand the slumber camp. The problem is it's 50 wood you spend here. So this villager can gather here when he would gather faster here. Would be more effective. Still here should be a mining camp and you should... I don't know why you on farms. This mill is now correct. This, these villagers should be here with a mill on the deer. These villagers here should never build farms. You want the second TC if you go stone. These villagers should be off of stone as well. They should be on wood. And to be honest, you build now three military buildings and produce six spearmen. You could have done this with the barracks alone, without the two stables, without the blacksmith. You're also going slowly castle age. Does he want to go a defensive castle? But why so slow? Okay, you can write this cast three twelve. Um, the moment you build the Ragnar's Cathedral, you should switch to Prelate production. And the Prelates should go out of the Aachen Chapel and move to the Relics. So, this Prelate should be on his way here. The CC, yeah, builds now Prelates, but that's a little bit late. Why right this one? You want to gather the far away ones first. So this one should be number one. This one should be number. Two. This should be number two, and this three or this two three, something like that. English starts to produce longbows in the eleven minute mark. What the fuck is? Does he? Uh, but he has a second TC, but still, and. White tower? What? As I like the white tower in general, but why not start to see? Why men at arms? Just need to have a barracks. Why you go man at arms when you face archers? Yeah, it's okay, but also the spearmen are still dog shit. English doesn't care at all, okay. Um, you should have used, lost here all units and probably killed nothing. Also, all these villagers should be on this keep if you want to keep up. I don't really know why you want to keep up, but never mind. If you go in Feudal Age on stone, you want the TC, a second one. You still want the second TC because your enemy is on a second TC. Um, after you build the stables, you want the scouts to see what your enemy is doing. You don't want spearmen upgrades. That's the right upgrade. That's the wrong upgrade. That's Wrong order, you want a quad to man at arms first, then you want two handed weapons, and then you want heavy maces. Heavy maces is probably the 
unnecessarily upgrade in the game for men at arms because it's only okay if you have men at arms as the men at arms. But everything else is absolute dog shit. Um, yeah, and in theory it's also good versus knights, but to be honest, if HAE, men at arms, can attack a knight, the knight player fucked up. So you can use it versus uh, English. Versus English, you deal plus six. Uh, English men at arms, you deal plus six extra damage than any other stuff. Because the plus two is negated, plus two plus two armor of English, but. Versus general men at arms, it's really good, but. Overall. Not a good upgrade, I would say. These knights are. Also, I like the idea of the knights. I sh think he should do just knights, but the knights should be here. 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 Probably with a scout, so you have vision. <coughs> I just please, on oh God, oh, stop building houses. That's eight. That's eight houses now. That's eighty supply cap alone from houses. You have sixty, fifty-six. That's fifteen extra supply cap. You have a TC, I think, was ten or twenty. I have no idea, to be honest. Ten. Um, so you had ninety. So you have thirty supply, and you build more houses. If you want to build, produce buildings, produce barracks. Because now you actually want to build men at arms because knights and mass is aren't good. Scout would be amazing here. Yeah. Um, the men at arms you just could send them in the enemy base to do a little bit of damage. You more or less want to f uh, flood them with men at arms if you want to go men at arms. What I I like men at arms as an all in. I like men at arms as a defensive unit, but I don't like men at arms. Also to protect siege units or something like that. I quite like men at arms, especially as HOE. But also in to protect your archer lines or something. I like them even more than uh, spearmen because they actually can deal with archers. So English men at arms or uh, HRE um, crossbows men at arms, archer men at arms. That's a good combo. I also am fine with a few knights in there to harass. But these, why these are standing here? Why these? Go also here. These knights could go down here. These knights could go down here. I just want to check something. So you have vision about this. You have vision about this. And of your base. You have no idea how many TCs he has for the past forever. You don't even scout it that ever because your scout died probably here. Probably went here and then died here or something like that. And yeah, this relic should also be picked up. But yeah, you need vision. And you had two stables from minute. minute Six, seven, latest. So you should have vision about all of that. And yeah, this one should be dead. He, he can't go on gold like that undefended. You going for H4, he going for spearmen and archers in castle age with a few crossbows. 
So, jetzt will alles ein bisschen sweaty um meine Arms. Um, if you don't like to go ranged units with HOE, what I think is stupid because HOE has one of the better ranged units because they actually can buff the ranged student with the pellet, so they deal plus 15% more damage. What's actually huge on ranged units and not so huge on melee units or knights, it's okay, but to be honest, a pellet is so much slower than a knight that you don't really want to do that. Also still all the relics up. You have one relic, two relics up there. But yeah, this relic should be out, uh, already used. And because you lost your scouts and you didn't produce new scouts, you probably don't even know where the relics are. These knights just two-sided. Um, yeah, you lost 1.5k more units, you have less income. And more or less everything besides stone. You're uh, really high on stone, 20 villagers behind. I don't think you have any idea with your opponents on two TCs. Oh. We I have no idea what this keep is doing. You want it here, so you have actually protected your stone and the gold here and the sacred side. And probably the relic. Here it does nothing. So absolutely nothing. Here would be much better here. And now you want to cancel it or you lose a lot of stone. And maybe move the men at arms in here. Um, Castle Age with HRE, you don't want to go Knights, you want to go Horsemen. Sadly enough, you don't have enough stables for that. You want 6, 8, 4, 6, 8, 10 stables at the moment, I would say. The barrel count is okay, it's a little low. Okay, you Imperial Age. At least um, the Palace of Swabia, not a good position. You're not really close to anything you want. Also, here it would be better. Here at the woodland, it would be better. Now they just walk a lot of time. Back here to the gold. Okay, that's fine. Also, okay position for keep. Here, keep to protect the 8k gold. That's a nice deal. Also, you get 1.2k more stone if you drop it here. So you uh, get it back even. Um, so yeah, um, what, what I was wanted to say. Um, if you don't like ranged units and you want to play stable barracks. It's a valid combo with HOE in Castle Age. But the, uh, um, the buildings are completely wrong, the number of that. You have five barracks and two stables. If you had five stables and uh, two barracks, it would be better because you're actually in Imperial Age and Castle Age. If you don't go Mind Black, uh, yeah, Mind Black Palace for the plus uh, two, two extra armor for knights, you want to go Horsemen. Even with that, besides English, you want probably go horsemen or everything that's not heavy ranged units. Even then, horsemen are really good with my red palace. And you want to spam horsemen with Landsknechte. Why you want to spam horsemen with Landsknechte? Landsknechte are good versus uh, crossbows, Landsknechte are good versus spearmen, Landsknechte are damage dealers. Horsemen are really mobile, horsemen are good versus ranged units. So the enemy can't really go siege, the enemy can't go really crossbows, the enemy can go archers, but archers sucks. And if he goes heavy archers, you also can add knights in that are even better versus archers than horsemen. They suck versus crossbows, also they suck more than horsemen do versus crossbows. But, also knights, but they're really good as archers, so 
you can switch between archers, horsemen, rabbit thing, but normally the enemy goes heavy crossbows with spearmen, a few archers, and I would advise against that spearmen, uh, Landsknechte, horsemen. You can later also go Landsknechte, men at arms, horsemen, but. Yeah, you want way more stables and way less barracks. A horseman costs the same amount as a man at arms, so you can spam either of these really well. And um, why you want men at arms? They are tanky, that's all. Men at arms are shit. You, they can do th three things really well. They can tank. They can. Uh, Great for all ins. If you rush Castle Edge and you want to all in with some net arms, they are great. And they can wait relative. So their waiting is really bad, but they are really disruptive. So I can send two men at arms, you can send them down here, and he can't really clear it. He has to send a few units to here. Two men at arms here, two men at arms here, and to slowly flood the enemy. And yeah, the scouts would be amazing. Your cavalier units should be everywhere on the map. Um, okay, I do that too. I'm not uh, non-stop microing them, but every second your cavalry stands around and does nothing, it's a wasted second. And then it's not really worth to build cavalry. Also, the enemy is free trading, so he has two TCs. It's free trading, to be fair, you catched up in the village account because of the Palace of Swabia. But you never should have gotten to that point, to be honest. Eco upgrades are quite meh as well. I like the plus three um, melee attack, but. I also would quite like to see um, the range melee attack, uh, the range and melee attacks going up. Yeah, we have range upgrade now. Eco upgrades are probably more important than military upgrades. Besides, you have to defend or it's not all in, but because both of you decided to do more or less nothing, that's uh, eco upgrades are way better. He getting more or less the finish of his eco upgrades and now the English player is more or less set for life. He has a good amount of villagers on food, he will now get gold from that as well. So yeah, he will probably get the last upgrade and then he's set for life. And the big problem for HOE is HAE's late game scaling was always shit. Yeah, with Minewreck Palace now, they have the best knights. Maybe second best knights. But I'm pretty sure late game French knights are better. Uh, HAE knights are now better than French knights. Just because the extra armor is so huge. Yeah, you have good men at arms, you have really good Landsknechte. Also, if you would get the upgrade to Elite and would max Landsknecht, that would be amazing. I also don't really understand why I never see HAE players go university and actually get infantry tactics. That's a 20% damage boost on your man at arms, so that would be 4 damage more. Plus 4 damage, I would say, is quite good. Or oh, plus 3 damage, I would say, is quite good for, for HRE and 20% more HP. 20% for 180, that's 35 HP, I want that. 35, 36, I think, even. 36 HP, quite good. This relic, I'm pretty sure so you doesn't have version of that. I also don't know whether your opponent doesn't pick it up, he went to monastery and never built anything out of it, but that would be 180, uh, 160 gold and that would be 160 gold per minute. 
Um, these towers should be cannon placements. He goes mass spearman men at arms. I don't really know what he's doing that. That absolutely sucks with everything HE wants to go besides calf units. And the uh, six crossbows do nothing else. Ten Landsknecht and everything here dies. Maybe fifteen. Yeah, that's the same cost as 50 knights. No, no, not quite, but I want the same cost. Everything dies he, and he can kill it. Oh, that's a nice catch. I quite like that. But yeah, his men at arms are... Rain got footmen. Yeah, they are also really good. They got bonus with the cavalry. Heavy melee infantry. Their men at arms are actually good. Men at arms beat these guys. Um, yeah, you should a move with the units or patrol move. So, and whether you a click somewhere, you d click somewhere. Um, so your units actually attack if they see a unit, because in this case they. Holy shit! Uh, are this man when got footman. But yeah, in this case they just went there and died. And yeah, we slowly see that in the destroyed volume, he's 6k up to you, he's... He traded 50%, over 50% better than you did. And yeah, the problem is, you don't have an army comp, you... Also, you have knights, men at arms. Plus 9 versus heavy units. Heavy melee unit. Where are the knights? Heavy melee cavalry. Bonus versus cavalry. Bonus versus cavalry. 23 melee attack. 280 HP. 90 melee attack. 25 mm attack with the upgrades. So you have a unit with less HP, uh, less HP, the same amount. 100 HP less and less attack. That's an actually good unit. The Vanguard footmen, they are actually good units. They are really strong. They beat your man at arms hard. So he has a better melee unit than you have. He has a better ranged unit than you have. By the way, HRE has the second best hand cannon in the game. I'm just saying. With toilet buff. Also, um, this the wildness would be really good. Your villagers would be getting 10% more resources here and this toilet should probably be here to actually buff units or in your army and buff your units with that. Um, Imperial Age hand cannoneers of HOE are really really good. The only hand cannoneers that are strong are Chinese ones because Chinese has actually good range and that makes them broken. Chinese hand cannoneers beat crossbows, Chinese hand cannoneers beat archers, they lose versus um, longbows but they beat normal archers normally, while HRE hand cannoneers and all other hand cannoneers lose versus archers because they just die before they ever got to shoot normally. We are now at the 30, 30 minute mark. I'm pretty sure none of you ever reached 200 supply block, but I find surprising. But yeah, and you see the. Four horsemen would have cost uh, cost the same, but they actually would have killed the crossbows. Um, if your on enemy is full age, knights are broken. If your enemy is castle age, horsemen are better. These the bombard. I'm a fan of siege units in the imperial age. Um, they actually could deal with the uh, rain guard footmen. 
but I have no no you have a cannon here that is okay damage it's really low damage but you want to protect the cannon normally he could have just one besides the man at arms kill the bombard and would be happy Yeah, that's a good fight at least, but... I think I can... To be honest, this army I can beat with Spearman only of ever since. That's how bad men at arms are. As a men at arms... They are Mitchell. They... They do nothing good. They just stand there and take damage. That's the only thing they're good for. They only need se spe uh, standard spearmen. This is not, not even upgraded spearmen, elite spearmen. These 12 spe uh, damage. You're fully upgraded knights without elite tactics because 20% uh, 3 attack damage more would be quite okay. The 19 damage. Yeah, they have, I think, even a slightly higher attack speed. I don't even know. Yeah, they have. But. That's. Uh, a knight had 34 damage output. A crossbow deals more damage per second to a man at arm than your man at arm steal. And they're ranged units, so they actually can attack. Uh, all of them can attack by human at arms here. Half your army doesn't attack, half your army doesn't attack, half your army doesn't attack. Oh, you now more. Yeah, 20% of your army isn't fighting. You won the fight, but. Your damage output is so low and you lose even if you win a fight you lose a lot of resources for that what shouldn't be happening you can either get even now in this situation you could get four uh, four five bombards place your man at arms before that um you should see man at arms are like spearmen they're good defensively they're not Good. Also, if you send them in the enemy production line here, they are good offensively, much better than Spearmen because they actually tank uh, unit fire. But in fights, they don't really do damage. Spearmen are so much cheap, and you can get so much more of them that they deal normally more damage than men at arms do. Also, ever said Spearmen are, are different because they have actually more attack range, so they actually are better than men at arms. He gets 20% more damage for his ranged units. Incendiary arrows. I quite like that you active with the knights. I think that's a thing you do quite well. Especially for the level. Um, you could also... You should always check the enemy gold resources and everything like that. They And you don't need so many knights here. That's another thing I see really often. Um, that's a typical mistake. You now start to send more and more knights here to this location. For what? The two knights or four knights you had, I already killed all the traders here. If you send now, now it's eight knights. With these two, there are ten. Yeah, you also want to decap the sacred site, I understand that, but if you have now 10 knights here, he can send all his whole army uh, up here, your men at arms are not that fast. Your, your army here, also the swamps are pretty unnecessary if you go bombard. That's 6 supply, that would be 6 knights in best case, or 6 Landsknechte. Also if you want infantry spam as HAE, Something like that, go Landsknechte. Also, you have the gold for that, and 
don't you have the gold income for that, not really the wood income. Something like that with Landsknecht the Horseman, amazing. Uh, where you want to go, Landsknecht the Horseman, um, yeah, you call the can uh, also. I really like knights as trading units. Knights are the best trading unit in the game. Two knights here, in, fift in 15 seconds all villagers are dead. Two knights here, if he doesn't react, after two minutes all villagers here are dead. That's why you play knights. You use knights in groups of two, send them around the map and see what they can kill. If you forget them, two knights, if you lose them, that's not good, but it's not that horrible. You can of course get a... If you want to play knights only, you can get a big mess. I still like if you get 3-4 groups of knights and send them around the map. But here could be two knights. 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 He would lose his whole gold income and his problem with his army is how he wants to react. He has, yeah, he has his own knights, but they are not even upgraded that well. Also, they are still knights, they are not elite knights or something like that. Also, he's better in upgrades than you are. He gets elite tactics. So, his basic man at arms will be slowly better than yours. And these monsters will rip you on your asshole, I think, because that's an actually good melee unit. As a melee infantry unit, they are close to the attack damage of a knight, they are super tanky, they are, have amazing stats. Their range a melee armor is a little bit bad, but bonus damage is calf units plus 5, that's okay, that's not amazing, but 23 basic attack, now going up to 25, that's okay stat line, especially with the HP for the cost. To be fair, the production speed is really slow. What? Shadow and Projectiles is okay, but why Meganets? If you want Shadow and Projectiles, you want Trebuchets. Also, you want Trebuchets from here, but also, I think you want more Knights uh, from here than other things, but okay. Um, English, you want, especially with the HAE. I think you want just Rebobber Quints, get to the Rebobber Quints and all your men at arms will die and they will never do damage. Rebobber Quints get countered by every basic ranged unit, so you have not a single ranged unit besides the Bombard. I would say good luck with that. One of Rebobber Quints kills your whole army. But yeah, that's a nice idea to warn him in. The big problem is you never contested this gold here. Amazing second mining camp. Still didn't scout this gold or this relic. Build a market, but not traders. You could have gone from trade because I have the feeling you also want low on gold. Would be nice if you had 4k gold here. And two more relics. I'm just saying. Yeah, and we see the big fight. You think these units here are fighting? That's the problem with uh, uh, melee only armies. They're just running up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, a few things you can A move it and then they stop running like maniacs up and down and actually attack sometimes, but still around half the army will not fight with mini armies. This fight is just maybe 20%. Rubbish his fingers. He actually has counter units against it. Your bombards do nothing. If you were Meganets, I would have understood that still I don't think you would have won because 
Jo, Juvent Man at Arms and Man at Arms suck. But... Yeah. If the whole army would be Landsknecht, you probably would have won against this guy. So if... Uh, there's a single... There's three good melee units in this game. Before. The Landsknecht is probably the strongest melee unit in the game against other melee units in mass. Oh, what was this one? He sucks. The second best melee unit should be the Abyssid Spearman. This thing is an absolute monster. The third best melee unit is the Knight. French, then HAE, upgraded Knight, then Mongol, and so on. Um, Delhi Knight is also pretty good with the plus 3 attack damage. Then the basic spearmen, the English Vanguard units are really good melee ones. The more or less every unit, even I think the okay the new Malians uh, man at arm counter unit sucks to be honest because it now has more or less non damage no damage at all. It's more or less averse spearmen with everything that's not uh, armored. To be honest, they still absolutely sweat through men at arms, so yeah. But yeah, what you should do is if you if you want to go men at arms in front of you, you want uh, your ranged units behind that. Probably hand cannoneers, crossbows or archers, depending on what the opponent your opponents you're forcing. Against this opponent, I probably went for archers, hand cannoneers behind that. Hand cannoneers deal nice with the melee units, and archers deal with the rest really well. But that's fine. Horsemen, um, Landsknechte would be fine. But yeah, I would say fix your army composition. You have with HIE get your pallets in it. You want to buff your units. It's okay with melee units, it gives, also, it's plus one, plus one and 15% more damage. That's in late game, two to three to four more damage on an attack, and minus one damage from everything you're getting. So, that's five attack damage difference your man at arm were doing versus his man at arm. Four to five different damage, and your minute arms suck with a knight. As with a minute, it's four to five, four damage probably, maybe three. But with a knight or any good unit or even ranged fights, your basic archers versus his longbows. Yeah, your longbows. Uh, his longbows have more range. They have more damage. Okay, they cost also more, but stuff like that happens. But they have. I think they have plus. They have one attack more. Um, fully upgraded with the prelate buff, your archers do actually more damage versus a longbow than the longbow does to your archer. Yeah, the longbow also gets more attack speed from his towers, and he also can use his ability to get more attack speed. But in general, HAE archers have a higher damage output buffed from a pilot in, ca uh, in Castle on, uh, Age onwards than in HAE, uh, than an English uh, longbowman. Same for his, for, same for the hand cannoneers, and every other unit. So that's. A really good buff, and English only has the um, Citadel, Citadel, Citadel for 40% and increase the attack speed buff. It's a really huge buff, but it's not as flexible as Abyssid buff or HAE buff. Also, same with Camel support for Abyssid or Warrior Monks for um, Woos. That's just buffs. Do, do we have something like elephant support for Delhi? I don't think so, but camel support is plus two armor on all your units as plus two two, I think. On your infantry units, that's even, I would say, in some cases better than the. 
I would say it's better for melee units than the prelate buff on worse for ranged units. So the prelate buff actually is better for ranged units. So that makes Abyss uh, HE one of the best ranged units. Uh, uh, Sifts with ranged units because they buff 15% more damage output on your ranged unit is significant. And the funny thing is, nobody's playing ranged units on HAE. 41 minute arms. <coughs> and 60 knights. He still will kill all your army just with crossbows. And I don't even think he has to micro, and the uh, rain guard man at arms are still relatively good. The 8 bombards, they are fine, but yeah, that's a problem with man at arms. <coughs> They're not that much more tanky than in that stage of the game. He snaps all your cannon bombards. And everything is dead. Also, relics and weakness cathedral is pretty bad. You want them in the keeps or towers because it actually buffs your keeps and towers by a lot, and you don't have any downsides. Besides, if it gets destroyed, you have the relic here instead of here. But in general, you want relics always in your keeps and towers as HOE. Besides, on water maps, you then you actually want them on your dogs for the extra attack speed. But yeah. I also don't really un okay your keeps and stuff like that deal actually a little bit range damage and they get upgraded from that but ranged upgrades are also pretty wasted. Still no one on the relict, no one gold and yeah I think this game is over because you don't took the two relics here and never took the gold. And yeah, the trades he more or less outweighed you by 2 to 1. Um, it's not because you're bad or something like that, it's only because of your army combo. Your army combo is atrocious. It's You only have heavy units, so they all get countered by crossbows. And Himokulas can gain. He builds his Vanguard units as a front line. No, none of your units can actually beat the Vanguard units because they're all. They lose in a direct fight against them. And the crossbows do the damage behind it and you die. First time you go really b uh, bigger mass horsemen again. If you had actually 20 stables. How many? If you have, okay, that's enough stables. So yeah, and if you only produce horsemen. And actually get the uh, upgraded for veteran horsemen, and you would have had the upgrade. A huge number of horsemen would shred over this. Yeah, the these guys they are still annoying as for the other guys, but um, if that would be Landsknechte, would also be a huge difference. But for Landsknechte, you don't have the gold any longer. That's the other reason why you want horsemen because you actually can afford Landsknechte then instead of knights. Knights also would have been fine if you went for the uh, Mindwreck Palace and fully upgraded that. But yeah, you have to be effective on these. Yeah, I like these horsemen, they all should have come from the flank. And yeah, a little bit more coordination and it's been fine. Um, when these horsemen, if you had sent them this way around or like this, 
And this horseman, this, and your man at arms here. Also your man at arms engage here, your horseman one from this side in, and the other horseman come from behind. You more or less could have cleaned his army. To be honest, I don't think it makes a huge difference. Um, that's the other big thing. As HRE, you should go for a castle age finish. Um, I think every Sith wins late game versus HRE. In general, besides they have a huge lead. HRE is fine in late game, but... In general, they have a harder matchup in late game than any other Sith. Because the don't scale that well. Um, yeah, so I was really, cr I was really critical on the game, um, but I don't think you're really bad. It's more you did a few mistakes. I don't think you just didn't know how, how this works or stuff like that. Um, overall, I think you play fine. Um, let's just fix the. Um, fix the unit combo, so get actually good human comps you want, normally gold and wood um, mixed, I think this one's, no, this one it was, hey, also yeah, let's start from the beginning. You went on stone, I think you sh if you go to stone in Feudal Age, you want a second TC as fast as possible. Second TC drop time with HOE should be around 5 to 7 minutes. It's absolutely doable with them. If you go a second TC, I personally like Mindwork Palace more than Aachen Chapel, but you can bo go both. Um, if you want to go rush Castle Age, don't go on stone. Be f as effective as you can. Skip as many wo as much wood as you can. Maybe just get a defensive tower at your gold or your wood line where you need it more or less. And rush Castle Age. Get keeps. Get your relics. Send um, the moment you start Crackers Cathedral. Stop villager production. Switch to pellets. Send all your pellets out. Try to get all five relics. If the enemy has heavy map control, you can send all five pellets uh, out, then you should produce more villagers and build an army to defend them. The first thing after hitting Castle Age should be Knights. Um, really easy, you want units that can deal damage to you to your opponent, because your opponent will be either slow on Castle Age rush or uh, will go 2TC, so he has a villager lead, so you want to get rid of that, so you want to wait with knights. You don't really want to stay on knights, besides if you go Mindwreck Palace for the plus 2 armor. Um, you normally want to, as I said, Horseman Landsknecht is a good combo. Uh, Archer's uh, Man at Arms is a good combo. Crossbow Man at Arms is a good combo. Archer Crossbow Man at Arms is a good combo. Man at Arms Landsknecht with ranged units is a good combo. Uh, Man at Arms for Siege Units is a good combo. Also, Mega Nails and maybe a Trebuchet and a few Springles to defend your Mega Nails. But you need ranged units for the DPS or Landsknecht for the DPS. Um, if you also can go just Knights only, like French, so watch 7 Minute Castle Age, go Knights only. It's a viable playstyle as HRE. I think it's doable, especially in the lower leagues. Um, the other thing is, you have to play it like French, the problem is your pressure point is later than French, you have, to, for the plus side is you have more passive income, you have a better economy behind it and way better units. Um, and then you more or less only build knights and you split your knights everywhere and just wear the enemy to death. I think I have a few videos up from gameplays for me um, where you want to also the thing is you don't want if you go cavalry cavalry or melee units only you don't want huge balls because as you saw half your army doesn't fight they just move around um, yeah you can a click on the ground a few times to contradict it in fights but 
normally tw uh, 20 to 50 percent of your army won't fight with melee units and that's really bad because ranged units 100 percent of the ranged units will fight maybe only 80 percent will actually deal damage because the rest of them attacks at that unit but that's still better than 50 percent or 60 percent of your units deal no damage and your units have lower damage output as well so yeah i think you want that's probably the main thing you want to take a look on I see if I can take a look on another game, but yeah, that was it for today. See you guys and good luck. Bye.